Greetings. Welcome to Safe Space Talks Mind Mastery. I'm your host, Nigeria Anderson. And today we're going to talk about weaponized tactics. Mm-hmm. So listen, the first one we're going to talk about is weaponized incompetence. And we already can hear the word on that one. So weaponized incompetence is a passive aggressive behavior where someone intentionally or unintentionally pretends to be unable to complete a task in order to avoid responsibility. You know how you tell your your child, a child I'm talking about, you know, go clean your room. And they like, okay. And they don't clean their room or whatever, you know, but they're a child. So um, this one's for adults. Okay, I'm going to talk about that. And then it, occur, it can occur in many settings like your workplace, in your friendships, and even, of course, romantic relationships, which I'm basing this uh, session on. Now, let me say things that I'm, I, I may say some things using examples, but it doesn't mean that that person is uh, weaponizing you or using a, a tactic, a weaponized tactic against you. However, a repeat offender of a crime is most likely to be arrested. So this information I'm giving you today is so that you may be able to arrest the perpetrator. All right. So now you may ask someone to do A, B, and C. And if the person is avoiding the responsibility, they may say, oh, I was just getting ready to leave. Can you do it? Oh, I, I will. I will. I, can I do it when I get back? And then, you know, it, it don't get done. Um, or they may say, you may ask them, can they do something? They'd be like, I was just getting ready to leave. I, I was, I'm running late. You know, can you do it? I'm going to wear that out. Uh, you know, and then you're like, okay, you know, um, and then you do it. <laughs> you get my point? So weaponizing confidence is someone strategically, though. It's a strategic move. So that's the difference. So I may mention something, but understand that they've been plotting and planning. So it's a strategic, that someone strategically avoiding responsibility by pretending to be incapable or inept at a task so that someone else helps, takes over. This is why I need you to stay focused. Take takes over or stops delegate or stops delegating tasks for them okay weaponized incompetence you have met this person but today i want you to hear my heart because i don't want you hearing this and trying to figure out who you know has these traits but on today, I want you to look at you. Just say, ouch. <laughs> Just say, ouch. You know, my favorite scripture, which says, examine yourself. Come on, come on. Don't click away now. No, y'all was getting ready to be like, I know somebody who act like that. I know, ooh, ooh, I know. But um, no, nope. um, look at you. Because a lot of abuse it's because um, we miss some stuff. We miss some signs, right? And that's why I'm here. Or we allowed it. I know people want to get on here and just be like, you know, and they did this to me. And my question is, and what part did you play? Because you played a role. Ah, you played a role. You played a role in the mess. Nobody want to tell you that because, you know, they, they just want to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that to you. They don't never say, but um, did you see some signs? You know, what did you do? I know. I know. That. That's why I'm, I'm not a therapist, but I'm that friend that's going to say, you know, that's messed up because, like I said, nobody deserves mistreatment. But did you see some signs? And, um, you know, what did you do? And, okay, so this is for mature audience. Oh, uh, I better say this is for mature audience or something. I don't know the YouTube rules. 
But uh, yeah, if you're sensitive and you, you can't take accountability, okay, yeah, you might want to go home because this is for you to be a better version of you. This not, this not the, like, like you want, you go look at last week's video about abuse indicators and in relationships for the Uchi Uu, so sorry. This is, uh, we're going to have to take some accountability. I know, I know, it's okay. And this is probably why I only have 100 subscribers because the role for truth is very narrow. It is not wide. And I don't have no fluff. I don't have no gimmicks. I don't have no fancy stuff. I just have me who cares about you. And I want you to focus on the message and the information to improve your quality of life. And once you do that, you can run around sounding off. I truly am living my best life. And no one will be able to mentally pimp you anymore. I know, I don't, you know, it's, it's always excellent when you're your own boss and stuff. Because then, like, you know, you can say stuff like that. So how to examine yourself. Acknowledge how you respond to people when you're feeling stressed and upset. I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you language and behaviors to recognize when you are being weaponized. I will. Because transformation can only happen if you are what? Family. Where's my safe space talks people? When you are what? When you are willing to be transformed. When you're willing. Okay? Weaponize incompetence. Example can you load the dishes in the dishwasher and start it for me? Okay, so this is what you're saying. And the person goes, uh, uh, how do you use the dishwasher? I don't want to mess things up. And you may say, you know, because you're busy, you're doing something, you're in the other room. So you're like, no, you see the two flaps or you see the, the, the you know, one says detergent, just load and put the detergent in the area that says detergent. And they will say, yeah, but there's two flat. I don't see it. I, I, I don't want to break the machine. So <laughs> you're tired of, you know, yelling from the other room. So you come storming in, right? By this time, you're like over trying to explain. So you end up taking the dishes yourself out of the sink, placing them in the dishwasher, putting the detergent in the pies. And while they, you listening, go sit down, finish watching TV or scrolling on their phone. Yeah. And you, you over there, you just putting them dishes in the dishwasher. And so other language that someone is weaponized is using a weaponized tactic. And this is something, this is one of those examples I know I might, you know, uh, they may say, you may say, remember last time when I tried, they may say to you, remember the last time I tried to do it, um, I messed up. So I don't want to, I don't want to mess nothing up. Last time you asked me to do something, I didn't do it the way you wanted me to do it. It got into a whole situation. So I don't want to do it. This That's in the relationship. They will definitely work that one on you. All right. I have no idea how to do that. Can you do it? I'm telling you, this tagline, can you do it? You know, I wish we could hashtag. Can you do it? Can you, can you do it? Right. And oh my goodness y'all don't know how much that one bothers me so remember weaponizing competence is someone strategically avoiding responsibility by pretending to be incapable again let me stress these examples do not mean the person is pretending and is trying to weaponize you but here's how you can tell let's go back to the dishwasher what you did not do is show the person how to use the dishwasher, whether it was your friend, a youth, your spouse. You have to take responsibility that 
you are not, you take responsibility so that you're not enabling someone to weaponize you. I know. I'm here. I'm Nigeria. I'm your friend. This, this is we talking. Don't let them go back and sit down on the couch watching their favorite show, scrolling on a scrolling on their phone. Simply say, please, family, without an attitude, and this is both male and female, so don't because men get attitudes too, okay? Simply say, without an attitude. Let me show you. Let me sh- let me show you. Okay, so here's this this is where that you put the, you know, the dish, the cascade or whatever y'all using. I don't have a dishwasher. I still wash dishes. I I I, I just like washing dishes though. Um, let me show you. Here's here's where you put the the soap. Here my pods. This is where you put the pods in. You want? Let me do it. Show. Let me see you do it. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Pour pour it in there. Uh huh. Right. You did good. Mm hmm. Right. Let me show you. If you tell them, let me show you, and you show them. And then you actually just pass it to them so they can pour it in there and you watch them do it because you showed them. You didn't just let them go sit back down. And then the next time you ask them, this is how you know you, <laughs> you're being weaponized. You watch them do it. You just pass them the, the cascade and you gave them the pie and you showed them what to do. They loaded the dishes, right? And this is not funny, please. Y'all know I have, what's that called when you just laugh? That stressful thing. It's a stress, it's a stress thing. I laugh to not be stressed, stressed out. <sighs> Cause I get upset, guys. I get upset for you. I get upset for you. So you show them how to do it. And then the next time you be like, hey. Can you can you put the dishes in? The, can you start the dishwasher for me? You know what they're gonna say? Uh, I forgot how to do it. Can you do it? <laughs> I'm telling you. Then then you gotta know there's something going on because it looks like a pattern, right? There's this pattern of behavior, so it's not like I mean, someone could forget. They should, but they could forget, right? So, but if it's a pattern, they constantly, every time you ask them to do it, and they like, I forgot, I can't do it. Can you do it? it listen, put in the comments if any of this is relatable to you, okay? There may be something going on. Now, last week I spoke about abuse, indicators in relationships, like I mentioned, weaponizing is just another measure of abuse which is subtle it's so subtle you know this is why i'm sharing all of this because me i can spot it i'd be like "Mm, no okay but it's subtle and it appears so innocent but it is not it is another controlling method to get you to do all the work again whether it's at um work in your friends you know uh or spouse or in a relationship people who are most likely to be weaponized and this is what i'm talking about it are those who think they need to do everything because they don't have no help and when they ask for help and the person moved too slow and didn't do it exactly the way they wanted them to do it, they just take over, <coughs> excuse me, uh, take over the job like the dishwasher situation without showing the person how, okay? It is not that you don't have help. You're not good at delegating. You're, you, you don't ask because you think, because you haven't shown someone how to treat you or how to, you know, um, be your companion. Mm, mm, mm. You haven't explained yourself. You, you, you may be in all this bliss or just yourself. 
overbearing. I got it. I'll do it. I'm going to go ahead and go like that because I used to be that person. I used to be like, oh, I got it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Until one day I was walking and I heard two people talking and I heard them say, oh, just ask Nigeria to do it. She'll do it. I was saying these grown folks, what they mean ask me to do it? That I'll do it. Change my whole, see See how God helped me? Because I was like, what they mean? Just ask me, I'll do it. I mean, I don't mind helping. I really don't. But that, that, I was like, oh, oh, I'm being used. I have just, I, and they just talking about me. I said, huh. So I went back and when they came, I was like, hey, can you do it? I was like, no. <laughs> no, I can't. No, I, I'm unavailable. It's my line. Boy, I'm going to teach y'all some lines. I'm going to teach y'all how to go on and train other people how to t- treat you. You got to be treated with respect and dignity. We are part of the royal priesthood as Christians, and we are not to be um, trash baskets. So like the dishwasher situation, without showing the person how to do something or taking your time to educate, right? I know this may sound like, why well, I got to, they grown, they should know. They See, this is, this is a fault. Because I was like that too. This is why I can get on here and share with you. I thought everybody over 25 was just grown and they, they knew better until I realized, no, they don't. So I moved from 25 to 30. So now, you know, that's unfortunate. But at 30, now I think that like you should be mature enough. And if you're just not at 30 mature enough, God bless you. Um, get a mentor, um, read more books, take some courses. I'm serious. Like it's not a good time to be um, unaware. Okay, uh, maybe you, you're not the person who likes to ask people to do stuff for you, but you, you're going to have to snap out of that. Okay, you're going to have to snap out of that because you become a victim. All right, again, I get passionate. Um, or maybe, you know, you're a micromanager. Uh, we'll talk about that too on the show. There's always these... these uh, names that pop up that are connected to something else like I always say so you know this is why I always say you gotta remember to examine yourself could it be you or are you the one that wants to be in control all the time or are you the one weaponizing people do you have weaponized tactics ask yourself do I do that right am I the one saying can you do it <laughs> Is it I, Lord? Is it I? Right? I I know. Just say ouch, because I'm really here to help you. You know, I I I, I don't want you to be hindered in your growth. And all I'm trying to do is create an awareness, especially when it comes to behaviors, because behaviors are the tell tell tale signs that something might be off. And I find most people don't like to tell people the truth because they don't like to be confrontational or simply they don't know how to defend themselves when someone snap back at them. Okay? Or they feel or they just don't feel like arguing. So they just let things go. But when you do that, especially in a relationship, you are opening up a door. You, you can't, you, you, you have to stand up for yourself and you cannot ignore these behaviors. Remember, I, I'm telling y'all, stop dismissing people because of their behavior. We're going to have to confront some people because this getting ready to get real tricky out here. And you're going to have to be like, Joshua, who's, you know, who you with? You're going to have to be like, Moses, whose side you on? You, you got to ask second and third level questions. We can't just keep saying, well, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. 
All right, so like I said, in the dishwasher example, you responded out of frustration. Say you didn't show the person. So now you're responding out of frustration. You angry. And 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 this is what causes you stress. This is causing you anxiety. And it's causing your blood pressure to elevate. Because you just like, listen, every time I ask you to do something, I end up doing it. You keep saying, can you do it? Then what do you do around here? <laughs> Yeah, boy, you ever said that to someone? What, well, what are you, you living with someone? You're like, well, what do you do all day? I'm just sharing. And you end up murmuring to yourself, not conscious commands, because you, you're just angry. So you mumble, like, I don't never do nothing now. I got to always do that. Blah, 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 blah. Do you mumble that to yourself? If you find yourself saying that, mm, if you find yourself saying that, Hey, you got to look into some things. You're going to have to look into some You don't need that frustration. You don't need that anger. You don't need that stress. You do not need that anxiety. Someone is causing all of this. You're not in a healthy relationship. I mean, it, it, it. You can't keep saying, I have to do everything. Where am I? I have to do everything, people. Nobody helps me around here. Or I might as well just do it myself. You, If you are that person, please put it in the comments because I am going to respond. If you have said these things, you, you, you got to examine yourself. When you begin to experience these signs, anxiety stress sometimes you feel like oh they're coming over oh they asked me to go to lunch oh i don't if you if a person makes you feel like that sweetie you can't you can't put your body through that and of course there's a root from childhood or a previous relationship we know these things because y'all be watching safe space talks my mastery so y'all should know stay with me <sighs> You're going to have to know the answers to the questions. Why are you saying that? I, I do everything. Why do you say that? Okay, and this is for the married people, okay? So, you're married, right? And remember I told you that person just shows up and you're like, what happened to the nice person? I married. What happened to the nice person? Okay, so you're married. And um, before they were the life of the party, now you just want them out of your life. Okay? And you both agree to have a baby. Now, there's always one who wants the child, wants to have a baby more than the other, both male or female. A guy may be like, yo, I'm ready to have this baby with you. And a woman is like, I want to have this baby. So sometimes, you know, it's one wanting it more than another. And sometimes, of course, it's mutual. But let's, let's meet the new person. Okay? So... Whoever made the call and the other then agrees, right? You both want it and then one wants it more, but then the other agrees. Meaning the wife really wants to have it or the husband really wants to have it. Now the baby is here. You went shopping together. You made the room together and planned out the schedule for the doctor's appointments, feeding, child care then the spouse who really wanted the baby seeks help from the one who agreed and now they're like oh can you do it <laughs> it's not funny but i tell you that that is my best way to deal with this foolishness or i would do it 
but it'll take me too long and I have to finish up with whatever X, Y, and Z. Can you do it? Your response will be the same of anger, frustration, and not feeling like they are upholding their end. Say you ask, can you give the baby a bath? And then you walk in and the person is using the dishwashing liquid saying they couldn't find the baby soap and you are outraged and vow to your whole self never to let them wash the baby again. Instead of showing where the baby items are kept, otherwise you are aiding in causing a strain on the relationship. I know you didn't want to hear that. I know you didn't want to hear that. I'm not saying that it's okay for people to weaponize. I'm not. I'm just really trying to show the role you played in that a little bit, right? You, 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 in yourself, like, she ain't or he ain't never washing my child ever again using dishwasher liquid. Well, let me tell you, back in the day, that was okay. I promise you. But not now, okay? We want to use the baby soap and all that good smelling baby stuff, which I love. I still don't want one, but I still love the all the good baby smells. So again, you have to show them where you keep the baby soap, the towels, everything. Stand, you know, with them and, you know, together, you know, let the person wash the baby. Oh, you did a good job. You know, don't be here, here, here. No, let them use their own hands. Let, let like you're not there all you're doing you're not even supervising you're just making sure they know where all the the, the baby stuff is <sighs> and then you can stop feeling like you're the only one taking on the responsibilities and then when there's too many can you do it after we agreed to have the baby? And every time I turn around, you like, can you do it? Oh, you you gonna have to, you you're gonna have to trust that, you know. And and one thing I find out about people who do these things, you got you you gotta you gotta address it. You gotta address it early, so they can. They may just leave you, and that might be a blessing, okay, if you address it properly. Or you might you might be helping them. You you might be helping them. Moving on to weaponized entertainment. Well, well, well. This has been going on for years from black exploitation films, gangster rap, gangster movies. The puppet masters have really done a good job with this tool and we still see it today and especially among our black entertainers like black artists are to me black artists are the most weaponized group of people in entertainment i have ever seen and i'm not saying it's not in other groups because i have seen in, in other groups and it's like oh they should be outraged at this buffoonery but when i watch black artists across the globe because you know they got a million channels okay so you can watch all around the world and when i see the same ratchet nonsense that's played over here that's being played over there i'm like I don't know if they're saying this is how the Americans do it and this is successful and this is how you need to do it. Um, I don't know if it's like they're like, <laughs> you know, cloning Tyrone's. <laughs> All the shows are the same, all the drama is the same, all the crimes is the same. Oh my goodness. The flashy cars, the clothes, all the same. 
it's, it's just really all the same. Just they got different accents, you know. Um, but it's it's really just the same. So in order to get the money or be in the show, now you have to give me that black swag. You got to act more black, be more black. Okay, that's my rant. That that's my rant. <laughs> that's my rant. Because, and I feel as an educated black woman, when I see women being mistreated, and I mean, I don't know if you guys realize, but I am offended um, at the abuse of women in the films lately. This, I, I just, I can't take it. I just be like, are you kidding me? You know, men just punching women in the face like it's okay. And we be like, ooh, ah, no, no, no. Why are we not banding those movies? Where is the um, the Me Too's and the, the Black Lives Matter and stuff when it comes to stuff like that? See, this is what I be saying. Oh, I'm ranting. You know, sometimes we just, some people just worried about the wrong things. There's a, there's a better fight than who somebody's sleeping with. I'm just, I'm just sharing. So weaponized entertainment, um, you know, it's the art of influencing a group in a direction of desiring to be, let's say a hip hop artist, singer, a gangster, or an athlete. Meanwhile, let me say something. Some of these hip hop artists didn't even come from the hood. Some Hip hop artist may have been a correction officer. Do your homework. And some have college degrees, never sold drugs in their life, but are portraying a false narrative to those who engage in listening to some of the best storytellers, honey, to date. Now, I know I'm speaking about black artists, but like I said, I've seen. I seen other nationality and group ethnic groups being disrespected by media. And here's the cause. When you see BET become a subsidiary of Paramount Global CBS Entertainment Group, and you learn that Tubi is owned by Fox Corporation. And then you have the Comcast NBC slash Universal merger and they own N. MSNBC, CNBC, US Network, Sci-Fi, Oxygen, Bravo, and Universal Pictures. You're getting my point, right? When Lionsgate owns Stars, Arston Entertainment, E1 Television, and Trimark Pictures, and they consider the top four major networks, NBC, Universal, CBS, Paramount, Global, formerly of Viacom, ABC slash Disney, Fox, and then you have CW and PBS. So, um, one thing, did you notice NBC slash Universal and CBS slash Paramount? I'm always amazed how other people know how to come together and merge it and expand their reach. And let me ask somebody, hey, I'm doing Safe Space Talks My Mastery. I heard maybe, you know, uh, could you help me out in spreading, you know, mental <laughs> health awareness or something? And I was wondering, you know, could I, I be on your channel or I haven't asked this. I'm just saying this. Um, or would you come on my channel or whatever? And they're like, mm, no, my, I got a million followers. You only got... 12 followers. No, I'm not doing that. And so this is why it's a top four in entertainment. No, are they? Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm coming around the corner real quick. Are there black owned networks? Sure. You got TV one, Aspire TV. You got BT, Balance TV, Nor TV, OWN. Slang TV, the African channel, you got Revolt and the Impact Network, which is Christian. Bless God. Thank you. Y'all call me the Impact Network. 
There are some options, and I just want you to be aware and be mindful that there is a design for your attention, and you can opt out and not be weaponized, okay? I mean, you have entertainment, another form of weaponized entertainment. They have something in an industry called blackball. Which means that the person is rejected from being a part of the entertainment world because, you know, the top four really own everything. You know, they in charge. So then you get blackballed and, and, you know, or you, you become independent, but you don't have that, what they say, the machine behind you. You know, everybody want that machine. I thank you, Jesus. That's the only machine I need behind me. Because either, you know what I've learned? Either people, going to listen they're not going to listen they like you they don't like you it is that's life all right so we see the majority shareholders we know who they are i just told you you can scroll back if you need to and if they own the majority then they control what will be seen and these companies deliberately use programs to weaponize certain groups which is sometimes known as cognitive hacking y'all better say Nigeria do her homework Ooh, I know this industry inside out I tell you that's why I sit here and can do it that's why I can do it I can tell y'all cognitive hacking TV film radio all of it all of it and the content that they use is to create fear, change your beliefs, which changes your behavior. They use propaganda, conspiracy theories, social media bots, computer hacking, promoting lies and false information. And as our former President Trump said, fake news. These major companies also use subliminal messages. All of it is considered weaponized entertainment to me and cognitive hacking, as I mentioned, because their marketing departments are excellent in knowing what to put out there. Why I mention weaponized entertainment? Because it plays a major role on your emotional state especially pouring so much into your subconscious the subconscious part of your mind and if you are not monitoring you may become depressed just by watching your favorite show anxious fearful watching the scary movies stressed out i mean these are some of the these are some of the effects from just watching what you think is innocent TV. And let me tell the parents who keep throwing these, the, the little I, the iPads and those little, uh, the phone in front of your kids, unsupervised. That's very dangerous. Very dangerous. I, I hate when I go to a restaurant and the parent is just sitting there eating whatever and the kid is on the the, the phone or their little pad and have a conversation with your child at the table while y'all eating. And I know it's a lot, family. I know parents, y'all stressed at every end, but please keep watching Safe Space Talks so I can help you navigate through all of the stress, what to look for, how to respond, what you should be doing. I know, I know you're mad. You're like, how you ain't got no kids? Don't be telling me what to do with my child. Da, 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 da. I don't care. I'm telling you, okay? I've worked with kids. I, I've done some um, volunteer work at Covenant House. I don't even want to cry. Oh my goodness. I don't even know why I brought that up. Ah. I know the pain of some of these kids out here. I know it being abused and molested and burnt and whipped and all right and then they got the nerve to promote slogans like Ben watch next Netflix and chill again 
If you do not understand the root of the problem, you cannot solve it. It is recommended, people, to stop watching TV 30 minutes before you go to bed. Stop sleeping with the TV on. Use the sleeper. Let me tell you something. If I go to a hotel and I got a shared room, and, you know, I got people who they just want to watch TV, let the TV make them fall asleep. I always tell them, please put the sleeper on two hours because you're not going to be up two hours watching. You're going to doze off. It's bedtime. You're going to fall asleep. I got to put my, my blinders on, get underneath the covers because I hate the light from the TV. And I got to go to sleep. Okay. But if you're, if you're a person, you can't sleep you're anxious, it's because turn the TV off 30 minutes before you go to sleep. Have a nice cup of tea and milk and honey. Mm, mm, mm. I love that. Say your prayers. Read your Bible. Digress. How was your day? Ask your own self. Was, was my, I had a good day today. Or I could have handled that different. Or, you know, do something. Take a bath. You turn the TV off. Go take a bath. But I suggest everybody, everybody, start monitoring your entertainment engagement. A word from the wise. A word from the wise. Finally, family, we almost there. We almost there. Psychological warfare. Hmm. Now, let me tell you something. And all of this is abuse. It's, it's just abuse. It's different names. And, you know, I'm saying weaponized tactic is a psycholo psychological warfare. Uh, for example, in a relationship, your partner may use psychological abuse in order to erode their partner's foundation of well-being. Now, this one. This one guy. This is the movie ones. You, you know, and I've seen too many movies, so I know this one too. Um, this is the takedown. This is the takedown. This is the abuse of all abuse. At least to me. That's my opinion. I'm not a doctor. But to me, this is this is the who we. It takes away the sense of a person's self-worth and they substitute it with self-doubt. They manipulate and manipulate. Um, today they call it gaslighting. It's psychological abuse. They try to make it sound softer than gaslighting. What is that? Listen, this is the takedown, okay? where the partner makes the other person believe that it was indeed their fault and not the abuser's fault. I've seen this in real life, psychological abuse. So psychological warfare involves a pattern of behaviors. You, gonna, you should be able to see this one. And that is designed to make the victim question their actions and decisions this manipulating tactic will leave a person in serious doubt and confusion and i'm telling you guys um this this one right here so this type of being weaponized is like a person who slowly releases carbon monoxide and we know that's a poison that has no smell. You don't know it's there, but it's there. That's that's that person, right? They're there, but you don't see their manipulation. You're not. You're being weaponized because you can't identify their manipulating carbon monoxide tactics on you and you're becoming sick and you do not know it. They're not asking you, can you do it? They are doing it to you, 
okay? <sighs> Weaponized indicators begins with a with the with the front person. Again, this can be a male or a female. Both are capable of this. They start monitoring you. They want to know what you like, what your needs. They gauging. They gauging you. So they can meet your need and they can begin to um, salute you and uh, begin expressing to you how much you deserve this or that. Uh, if you're going for a job promotion, they're gun ho with you. Um, anything you need, they're trying to be there for you. Again, this doesn't mean, oh my goodness, I got to keep saying it though. This doesn't mean that th this is someone um committing psychological warfare on you or weaponizing you okay it's just again as i say when it's a pattern when it continues on and on and on and on then uh, you gotta uh, figure that one out like you know when you're courting of course people want to know what you like stuff but you know i'm i'm you know I, 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 you can't keep you know, giving out your information on the second, third date, you know, that's not, that's not necessary. Okay. So they begin expressing to you how much you deserve this and that, and they being your spokesperson and cheerleader, like, uh-uh, don't talk to them like that, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, but not in the way of like protection. You can tell it's more of manipulating and they're watching you. Let me tell you, they're watching everything about you. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? So giving them more information, that's that's just putting more stuff in the pot that you should not have done. Remember, I told you that. Just say, ouch, you shouldn't be giving out all that information. All right. Now. When they start sharing about themselves, sometimes it, it, it might not be truthful. Okay, this is part of the lie. This is part of the troll. This is part of the game. Okay, so they may, a popular one. I don't get along with my parents. Like both of them, like most people might not get along with one and get have a better relationship with the other with both of your parents. And I'm not saying that that can't be. Okay, that can be. But you better pay attention to second and third level questions. Some of most people um, who who practice psychological warfare don't have friends, or they get along with their their parents, or their parents live way out of town, and you ain't never gonna meet them. Stop marrying people who you get married, then you meet in their parents. Don't do that. Okay, try to meet some people and make some assessment <laughs> before you just run and get married. Why you don't know their best friend? What, what, who know them at the job? You gotta do your homework too. Shoot. So the popular one is, you know, cause they always want to learn your family dynamics. So I don't get along with my parents. I hate my parents or whatever, whatever. And, you know, here you go jumping in. Me, don't worry about that. Me too. Me and my mother had a fight. Uh, my dad left and my parents are divorced. And then you just rattling. You just giving them information, information. And they sitting there like this. Mm -hmm. Really? Now, listen, they done stop talking. And there you go. <laughs> running it. Running it. And then he had he got another girl pregnant. And then and, and my mama, she started drinking and then she became abusive. Right? I'm not saying that this cannot be true. This can be true. Right? But when you dealing in a relationship and you ran that off like on the third or fourth day because his energy 
her energy. I just felt such a connection. And the devil has made himself light. Like light. Let me be clear. Again, like I said, doesn't mean that, you know, people who don't like their parents, that they're um, trying to be their psychopaths or de dealing with psychopath warfare and manipulation. No, sometimes you just don't. It happens. Family members, it's a dynamic. It's a dynamic. So once they see that you're approving of their decisions, because then they're going to be like, well, you know, um, when my mom did this, I did this. And, you know, this is how I dealt with it. And you're like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, you did. And then what they think and how they feel, it's like the movie Fallen, where they touch somebody and then that spirit jumping them. Now they spirit, that thing done jumped on you and you over there like, yeah, mm you know okay uh-huh you know we so connected same thing happened yeah and that's what you did oh okay you know next thing you know <sighs> you done gave up your power how by allowing them to make decisions for you right so you know what you want to eat you pick you pick something no i want to eat um <laughs> whatever you want to eat where you want to eat have some restaurants that you never went to that you would like to go to i want to go to the chop restaurant i want to go here i want to go there whatever you know have a be able to make a decision Oh my goodness. I you know, I've been there and done that. You know, what you want to eat? Well, I want Italian. What do you want to No. What do you want to eat? <clears throat> I don't know. Okay, I know this Italian restaurant. I really like. I want to go there. I don't want Italian. Okay, let me ask you again. So, what would you like to eat? I don't know. All right, so you don't want Italian. I know um this other restaurant and I don't I don't really want to go that far. See, now you don't want to eat with me because what we're not doing is this. Okay, we're not going to, I'm not going to keep saying, what do you want to eat? And you say you don't know. And then I make a suggestion, but you still don't want to do that. Not doing that. We're not doing that. By allowing them to make the decisions instead of ordering what you like so now okay y'all finally agree where you're going then you get there and you're like what you gonna have i don't know what you gonna have i don't know and then they all of a sudden oh oh i think we should order this and you're like okay you know it starts innocent remember it starts innocent not saying that this is they're trying to weaponize you it just pay attention because instead of ordering maybe reading through or what you want or what you're thinking about next thing you know now they ordering your food for you because i know you like that's what they that's how they act right now i know you like this so this is what i ordered for you next thing they're doing is i don't i don't want you wearing that blue shirt can you wear the pink one? Now, maybe that's okay, right? But again, when it's a pattern of this behavior, it's something to consider. Because start paying attention to your compromise. How much are you compromising? Because once you compromise your position, this is why I said, you know, um, please look at the video you have a say when we was in Atlanta, right? Um, you have a say. You 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 have a say in in, in your life and in, in your decisions. I don't care what relationship you in. You have a mind, Jesus, 
to be able to say yes or no. So don't, you know, watch that compromise. Start, you know, once you compromise your position, like I said, in any relationship, this is where the games begin. This is where it starts. They get in because you compromise your own opinions for theirs. Oh, they got you. They got you. Again, I have to share some of the root issues that cause you to suffer. You're with someone who's weaponizing you or using a um, weaponized tactic against you. You're going to have headaches. You're going to have stress. You're going to have fear. You're going to be doubting everything about your whole life that you've been doing your whole life. Can you imagine that? You're going to have anxiety. You might have uh, high blood pressure over this, depression. You, you, you can't think clearly. Then everything becomes about this person. Now you're obsessed with making them happy and now you're not happy. And once you've given over control, they are like the devil. They are not trying to give it back, baby. You done let up. You done gave them a toehold. Now they got a foothold. Don't be the victim. Don't be the victim because you ain't dated in a long time. They said you cute. (laughs) You want attention. You want to brag about your new love interest and how he or she looks good and ooh. If you don't know by now, it is not worth the trouble. It, 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 let, me, let me tell you, it is not worth the trouble. Okay? Because next, right after that, they start criticizing everything you do. This may not be the form. This not. This may not be in the form of a person um, pointing out everything you do wrong. Although that may take, that may be in it as well. But remember the carbon monoxide. You're being carbon carbon monoxide. Okay. It's the most subtle. That's why this one is dangerous. It's just dangerous. It's so subtle. It's it's like you know what's happening, but you don't know what's happening. Talk to your therapist about that. Say, like, I know what's happening, but I don't know what's happening. (laughs) Like, you've been doing, say, you know, we all have talent, skills, and abilities. So you're good at A, B, and C, or A, B, C, right? This, I don't know. I don't know what to say about what your greatest skill is, but you have a talent and a skill, and whatever it is, you can do it absolutely with your eyes closed. Like, you don't need no help. Um, You've been doing it for years. Um, uh, Remember, the carbon monoxide is coming. I'm getting ready to tell you, because it's slowly. And they begin to say, hey, why don't you try it like this? And you know what? Because they've been engaging you. They know what you need. They know they they doing their homework. And it works. And you're like, wow. And it might have been more efficient. You might have finished it quicker based on their intel. And, you know, you was like, that was a good idea. Y'all high-fiving, right? And it's all good. But then you just keep doing it the way you've been doing it because you that's what you've been doing. And you know what they're going to say? Why are you not doing it? doing it like the way I showed you or you know remember when I showed you and and you finished faster and you know you you said you like that and you're like yeah you know 
I, I did, I did, you know, and but I prefer to just do it like this, right? So the person may pretend to be upset, right? And claim I was just okay, ooh. Here's another line. Guys, if I say a line in this show and y'all heard it or used it or now you have a better clarity and understand it, please put it in the comments. But here's another one. I was just trying to help you. And then you're saying, no, yeah, no, you did. I appreciate it, but I'm just going to do it like this. And then they get more aggressive in their behavior. And don't, let me tell you something. Then they start being a little more facetious, a little, a little more aggressive, right? And they'll be like, don't you want to become better though? Like, you're not going to grow if you keep doing the same thing over and over. Isn't that, isn't there a saying, if you keep doing something over and over and not getting better results, it's a retarding, you know, they'll say something slick like that. And you're like, in your mind, right? You're like, but I've been doing it like this. I, I've gotten this far in my life. I've gotten promotion. This is my, my, my way of working. It works for me better doing it this way. That's my mode of operation. It's not yours. This is not your task. You don't have to do it. It's mine. And I like doing it this way. And so <laughs> they're like, well, you know, uh, you're not going to, you're not going to grow. And their goal is strictly to get you to depend on them and not maintain your own independence. That got you where you are so far, you know, and, and you will be wrong for allowing I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you you are going to be wrong for allowing someone else to begin to criticize you for something that you know how to do been doing it um, for years or a long time have been promoted it works for you um, and you don't need to change at this particular time and no one needs to force you it's not her and nobody. You're moving at your own pace. And to the point that they're intimidating you to compromise. Listen, I, I, I said in the last show, when your friends and people close to you start saying you change, please look in the mirror and examine yourself. Because you, you can't see it. You, you're not able to see it. And all they're doing is messing with your memory. They're trying to take control over your mind. Uh, remember, the abuser is never wrong. They're always right. And they'll play these games with you. You'll say something like, I forgot... Uh, where are my keys? And they'll be like, why you can't find your keys? You're always all over the place. And you're like, I just, I just said I can't find my keys. That don't mean I'm all over the place. But these are the little tricks that they use. So you have to be aware, right? And how do you become aware that maybe you're being under the influence of being weaponized, manipulated uh, by someone else. From time to time, pay attention to your behaviors. Like, did you normally get up at six to, you know, start uh, your meditation or your workout? And now they want you to lay in the bed with them until eight. Right, so now you're not getting out the bed because you know maybe y'all having intimacies until whatever time and showering. You know, you you missed your whole morning routine. Did they? Did that person affect that routine? When was the last time you hung out with your friends and had a good time? When? You know, yeah, when we get in relationships, we don't hang out as much, but it don't mean you can't go out every now and then. At least I hope not. 
And I didn't touch on finances. Maybe I'll do that next week. Um, but how is your bank account? Are you becoming broker? <laughs> like, is it going down? Is it going up? And either way, it still could be a manipulation. Okay, don't be like, no, he be giving me money or she be giving me money. Still manipulation. Um, are you in debt since you met this person? <laughs> right? You have to become aware of those subtle changes in your own life to help you see you have been bamboozled. Like I mentioned in the last video about abuse, you have to have an exit strategy when attempting to uncouple. You see, I put all the numbers there. Um, I, you could go back and see it, but um, I'm about to be off. I got to go. Lastly, like I said, nobody deserves to be mistreated. And when you protest for your rights and it becomes something just overbearing and overwhelming, that you're being mistreated. And people can't reason, right? No one, they're not able to reason with you about a situation y'all can't have a decent conversation it's always turns into an argument someone slamming the door someone leaving you know just try to keep your cool take notes figure it out examine yourself make sure you know you're not enabling and even if you have still leave you you still can leave don't stay in an abusive relationship with uh you know someone who doesn't value you don't respect you don't you know give you affection don't love you you know don't do it you don't do it so i'm nigeria anderson i hope i gave y'all some good stuff today i went way over my time mm. i guess I, someone needed to hear it so listen um, if you ever need to get in touch with me because I said something and you don't have a friend, maybe you don't know who to talk to, you can email me at safespacetalks at gmail.com. Listen, I'll be here next week, same that channel, same that time. And listen, please share, share, share. This was good. This was good. I could feel it. That this was good. Love me some, y'all. Bye-bye.